Hi, here we have some Battletech 6mm industrial terrain that was designed by Saucermen Studios uh, in Australia. If you're really only interested in the models and you want to see detailed images of the, the final prints then just drop down to the timeline below and move along to the section at the end that's called final results and you'll see the, the detailed images which will um, show how these prints have come out. However, when I was printing these I had some issues um, particularly with the ironing function and I found a way of overcoming those issues so if you're interested in that stick with me. This is Mad Mark Malloy keep watching. Right, before I start, I want to let you know about a little incentive I've got for you guys out there who watch my videos and subscribe to my channel. If, by the 5th of September 2023, I've had 2,000 views of this video, I will randomly pick out one of my subscribers and I will send you the models which are featured within this video. So regardless of where you are in the world, I'll pop them in a little box and I'll send them over to you. So if you don't mind clicking that subscribe button and sharing the video, I'd really appreciate it. Right, let's get on with things. So I've opened up my bamboo slicer and here I have all the models from my... Um, Saucer men 6mm industrial terrain. We can see the ones with the hexagonal bases here uh, which I've spread across two plates. They're the, the Battletech um, bits and then I've got the the normal 6mm terrain here without the hexagonal bases on it on a, on a, a separate base. First plate I printed off was plate number one as I guess you'd expect. So we'll zoom into there a bit I left my default settings for the materials. I switched on ironing. So if we go to quality here, um, I moved down to the ironing type and I did all top surfaces. Um, you see there's a number of options here. You can switch ironing off, which doesn't do any smoothing on the top of the surface. You can have all top surfaces, which will do any flat surface that faces up. And you can have topmost surface only. So I guess if you were doing a box and there was just a single surface on the top, all it would do was iron the top of that. So for instance, if I was to use that on this particular model here, the topmost surface would be that one. So it would smooth that, but nothing else down here. So hopefully you can see with that the reason I've done all top surfaces. Now, when I do... When I select ironing, what ironing does is that after you've applied your layers, it goes over the final layer, um, depositing a small amount of filament just to smooth things out. And it goes over very slowly, as I've said, very small amount of uh, filament with a very small gap between each layer that it puts down. So we can see here the ironing speed is 30 millimeters per second this is the ironing floor um, now I'm, I'm going to say here what I think this is I've, I've, I've never read up to check that what I'm saying is actually correct but that 10% I believe that's 10% uh, of what the nominal amount of filament you would normally use um, see if you're going across and doing a, a 0.2 layer and then we have the spacing which is 0.15 so that means that the lines are a lot closer together so you imagine with a 0.4 nozzle because the width of the nozzle is 0.4 you'd normally um, have a 0.4 gap between um, each layer but because we're putting out a much smaller quantity of filament we can bring that ironing line spacing down quite a bit and I've just left those at the default value so, I selected ironing, 
I went into each model I did adaptive um, layer height which means that where you've got more detail you have thinner layers so the the layer height would go down to say 0 0.08 where you have the thinner layers and where detail isn't so critical it can go up to 0.28 and I've done that across a number well across all of the models here I even find tweaked things um, you, if if you look at my other videos I have done a video on um, variable layer height uh, to explain how how I use it so I did the adaptive automatic adaptive layer height there and then I went in and just areas where I thought we needed a bit more detail I've just dragged it up or down to a layer height of uh, 0.08 so with that done hit slice hit print plate my models came out and I had a few problems so this one here we can see here that the surface finish is very poor particularly down in this area here so this surface you could almost use it as a bit of industrial terrain couldn't you you could <laughs> you could get by and say yeah it's like a, a pitted concrete base that it's all sat on but no nah, it shouldn't really be like that it should be smooth and similarly on top surfaces here like these little buildings I've got a similar arrangement there so I thought about it I made a couple of changes and with those changes I ended up with this which we can see much better quality or I believe it to be much better quality you can see it's well it's not just a case of me believing it's much better quality it is much better quality we've got much smoother surfaces here we don't have the pitting that we can see on the other models and similarly I've got another part here we can see the pitting on the base the pitting on the roof every top flat surface has got pitting on it and again the changes that I did in the set and the two changes and it's come out like this so I can see you all asking yourselves what are those changes Marty enlighten us right so here we go I'm gonna to go to the preview and what I'm gonna do is go down to the um, the top surfaces the and because this surface here will concentrate in fact I'll zoom into this part we'll concentrate on this part here and I'll go down to where uh, to just before we start applying that layer now if we look at what I've got here to save material I have quite a, um, a sparse infill and what happens is when I lay the layers over here so when I lay the layers on top of there the first layers I've put on will probably dip a little bit between these um, these diamond shapes that we can see here so if I go to I believe no, no it's not speed it's strength sorry if I go to strength what happened is oh I'm gonna have to slice the plate again right if we go to top shell layers here we can see uh, the value is 3 so as the layers are applied over here you'll get a bit of a dip and then it'll rise up dip rise dip rise and that will create a, a non even surface we'll then put the second layer down that would be slightly better because it's got a little bit of support in the middle here where there's no support when you you put the first layer on so that will be better then when we put the third layer on top it should be getting very close to flat however because I've got the wider gaps here I don't believe that um, by the time that third layer was put down it was flat enough I think we still had un undulations on that air on that air on that surface um, 
and then when we went over with the ironing movement afterwards that wasn't sufficient to fill up those gaps so we ended up with a, a mottled surface let's go back to it as we can see here so I believe that's a case of going back forwards back forwards back forwards and you just haven't got a smooth surface to put that layer on now I could have perhaps made that a bit smaller which meant that I wasn't bridging as far which meant that I could have got away with the three layers but I looked at that three and I thought to myself I thought well, if you stuck another layer on there you might you might actually make it all right so I thought right stick another layer on and I thought one more for luck so I took my top shell layer there upped it to five the logic being if I put five layers on that that by the time the fifth one's laid we'll be looking at about a, a mil thick of filament in fact because it's probably near a 0.25 um, on that top surface because of the uh, variable layer height you'll be looking at a 1.25 thick top layer there which should have ironed out any of the undulations by your time at the top so you you're applying the iron layer onto a nice smooth surface so slice the plate bear with me again so there we go that was my argument for getting a good layer on that and we can see from the results I had that worked um, particularly well now if I, I move up and we start getting to the top surfaces here but I'll go right up to the top I will go back to prepare and we can see there that these surfaces are green which mean we have a, a thinner layer so if we have a thinner layer on there particularly if I was doing three layers and you could imagine say that was as low as 0 0.05 not 0 0.05 sorry 0 0.08 is the lowest I can get let's say this surface here was 0 0.1 if that surface was 0.1 if I had three layers the thickest that would be would be 0.3 which again it's not particularly thick um, it wouldn't bond particularly well and because those layers are so thin you probably haven't got the material for them to form into each other and on top of each other so great I'll change that to 5 but if I change that to 5 and I've only got a 0 0.8 0 0.08 layer thickness that still only equates to 0.4 so I thought to myself I'm going to have to pluck a number out of thin air Yes, I've got more layers that should help, but 0.4 could still be too thin. And then I looked at this here, which is the top shell thickness. Now, if I was to put 0.8 in there, which is the arbitrary number that I plucked off the top of my head. I mean, you could, you could choose whatever number you want and experiment, but I went for 0.8. That means that where I've got a adaptive layer height or a variable layer height and I've got 0.1 or 0 0.08 um, 0.08 thickness on the top if it was 0.1 it would put down a minimum of 8 layers because regardless of what value I've got here it'll also always make sure that it puts down 0.8 of a millimeter or if I've got a 0 0.08 layer thickness it will put 10 layers down um, again 10 times 0 0.08 is 0 0.8 that will give us top thickness of 0 0.08 and I thought right I'll put that on I'll run a check and we'll see what the prints come out like and as we can see from the photos that I've shown those two changes had a dramatic effect on the quality of the parts again starting from the beginning this one here was improved dramatically this one here was improved dramatically 
so nice little tip if you've got problems with your iron surfaces my tip would be increase the number of top shell layers and increase the top shell thickness another thing I did when I went into this was I thought well the bottom shell as well I don't want the bottom shell to be too thin if for some reason which is very unlikely um, I'm going to get uh, God, my mind's gone blank there if for some reason I'm going to have thin layers towards the bottom because there's detail on the sides here I thought I probably want point eight there so I changed my bottom shell, shell thickness to point eight granted it would probably make any make any difference on what I've done here but it's not going to do any harm and I think it's probably nice to have quite a, a thick base on whatever we do so here we have the full set of Saucerman Studios 6mm Battletech Industrial Terrain as I said earlier if I get 2,000 views of this video by the 5th of September 2023 I will send off this whole array of buildings here of terrain to one of my subscribers I'm going to be getting the commercial license for these models so if you're interested in purchasing them as we see here they will be selling for 16 of your finest British pounds plus postage I'll also be looking at printing these models with my 0.2 nozzle rather than a 0.4 and I'll be covering that in my next video so let's have a look at these models and I think that the first thing worth pointing out is that because this is six millimeter terrain these models are tiny as a result when we start looking at the blown up the enlarged pictures of these models we will see levels of detail that you just won't see with the human eye for instance this is what you'd see with the human eye as an example and this is what we see when we zoom in close with the images that i'm going to be showing back to how the human eye would see it and back to the level of detail that will be seen with the photos that I've taken. So the reason I want to show this level of detail is so that I can analyze it and work out how I can improve the prints even more. In effect, how I can take the printing quality to the, the next level. So let's have a slideshow flicking through the images the photos that I've taken now I took these photographs in the back garden and I placed the models on a box on top of my barbecue and you'll notice a few little black dots on here where I think um, soot from the barbies blown onto the models so try not to pay too much attention to that the thing you should really be looking at here are the layers um, and as we get in close into the detail although you don't really notice them too much um, with the naked eye when we're getting close taking an image with the camera like we can see here we can clearly see the different layer lines as the part is which are produced as the part is printed on these particular models with me having used variable layer height or adaptive layer height I have layers that range from as low as 0 0.08 millimeters up to 0.28 millimeters and when we're looking at these images here one we can see that those layers are visible and two I would even say we can see where the layers are thicker and the layers are thinner so where do I go from here this is where I'm planning next to bring out my 0.2 millimeter nozzle I've done a few prints with that um, with reasonable success and I want to try that on these small six millimeter buildings 
and I want to see how close I can get with an FDM printer, with my bamboo, to reproducing the quality that you would get on a resin printer. Mm. Whilst this quality is good enough for terrain um, and looks good to the human eye, I always like to push myself a bit. So I just want to see how good I can get this. And then, I suppose depending on what people want out there, I can give them the option of having a printed at 0.2 with a not sorry with a 0.2 nozzle or a 0.4 nozzle. Now, obviously, with the 0.2, as you can appreciate, the time taken to print these models will be significantly higher. If you look at the settings within Bamboo, within Bamboo Slicer or Bamboo Studio, sorry, you'll see that the speeds for the 0.2 nozzle are significantly slower than for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and you'll also I guess appreciate that there's going to be a lot more layers because whereas your layers can be as low as 0 0.08 for the 0.4 nozzle we can actually go down to a layer as small as 0 0.04 40 microns for with or with the 0.2 nozzle. Well, I hope this video has been insightful and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, give me a like, subscribe, post a comment, or if you want to contact me directly about anything, by all means, drop me an email on madmarkmalloy at gmail.com. Look forward to seeing you in my next video where we'll be looking at the same models printed with the 0.2 nozzle. Mad Mark Malloy, signing out.